is now seen a political commentator and Republican strategist Al Stewart and seen an opinion contributor and former House Republican Investigative Committee counsel Sophia Nelson. And Sophia, we talk about the politics of this, why it matters. You know, the, the recent NBC News poll, which is one of the polls that came out over the last week, which shows Donald Trump ahead in a one on one matchup against Joe Biden, shows him losing. I don't know if we have a graphic at the control room here, trailing Joe Biden 45 to 43 if he is convicted of a felony. So there are potential political ramifications here where while he's trying to raise money off it, he might like the cash. It ain't good for him necessarily politically, Sophia. You know, to set the table for the folks at home, because all these legal opinions, I think, confuse the public a little bit. Let's set the table right now as we're talking. The House of Representatives is thinking about impeaching the Secretary of Homeland Security over the border crisis. There's a bill on the table that they said is dead on arrival. And then Donald Trump is arguing to a federal court that he is immune from criminal prosecution forever because he was president of the United States. I mean, it's utterly ridiculous. So the politics of this, as you say, are, are very fascinating to me because I just don't know where the public is on this. It's kind of all over the place. But I think that the politics are right now in Joe Biden's favor. And I'm not sure I'm buying into these polls because we're nine months or so out right from the election. And I think that it's gonna be a hard sell for the American public to swallow that they're going to accept this president again, a person who the courts is saying, and this opinion is really rough, by the way, that they're basically saying you committed crimes, you were outside of the scope of your office and what you did wasn't okay, and we're not gonna tell you that it's okay. Um, strong words from the court uh, and from you, Sophia. Alice Stewart, uh, as you look at this and you see this opinion, what are your thoughts on the impact this might have on the Trump campaign, besides what John is seeing as you're seeing some of these ads come down to say, witch hunt, donate, give $5, give as much as you can, they're coming for him, and they're coming for you, which is the argument they make over and over. Yeah, Sarah, as you know, the Republican base, uh, which is what he has... Uh, full uh, control over right now in the, the GOP primary is in his corner. They believe him when he says that all of these legal entanglements are a product of weaponization of the DOJ and overzealous prosecution that are simply going after him because he is a main threat to Joe Biden. And he says he is uh, taking this for the American people because they'll come after him, they'll come after the American people next. While that is not true, that is what his base believes. So in the GOP primary, this isn't going to have an impact on him. But as we move further out and you look at the, the ruling that came out today saying that he uh, isn't immune from uh, prosecution, look, most rational people will see you, say you don't need immunity if you haven't violated the law or the Constitution. So they're realizing, look, if he violated the law or the Constitution, he should be subject to uh, the judicial system. And we're looking at the latest CNN polls uh, on specifically his legal entanglements. Almost half of the people that we polled say that there should be some type of uh, uh, ruling on these cases before an election. Mm -hmm. And then we see some of them would prefer it, and a smaller number say that this would be, it would be better if we had some kind of a ruling before the election. But if you break that down into the... Uh, the politics of this, Democrats, independents, and Republicans, and the, and the independents are key in the general election as we head into November. We see 72 percent of Democrats that we polled say that it's vital to have a verdict in these cases before the election. 52 percent of independents want to see some type of a verdict before uh, November. Those are the people that could potentially change their mind either for Donald Trump or against him based on a verdict in these cases. So we're seeing a lot of people that do want to see some kind of justice served before they cast a ballot. Uh, Alice Stewart was just talking about Donald Trump's base. Yeah. That's House Speaker Mike Johnson, Armanu Raju, new seeking missile, caught up with the House Speaker and asked about this appeals court ruling a short time ago. Listen. I believe that they've been after uh, President Trump for partisan political purposes. I think that's obvious. And, and we call it lawfare, and I think there's no other way to describe it. Strong words. Th those right. are strong words. Just what Alice was saying there. And I do want to caution our political director, David Chalian, uh, you know, does note that while the polls do show that people might look upon Trump differently, if he is convicted of a felony, who knows what would happen ultimately if that took place? Because you see people like Mike Johnson, who no matter what happens, seem to stick by the former president, Sophia. 
John, you know, it is dangerous. I have to use that word, and it's a threat to this republic for the Speaker of the House of Representatives to dismiss and court a court of appeals that says in this 57-page document how serious this is. It's a threat to the separation of powers. It's a threat to our stability as a republic to allow Donald Trump to even argue something like this, much less affirm it. So they're just, I don't know what to say about the Republicans. I, I'm out of words, to be honest. I just don't have them. Alice, you do. I think, <laughs> as we as we look at this, <laughs> hearing hearing from the speaker and hearing him use some of the same language uh, that Donald Trump uses and that his campaign uses uh, in a case like this, where 57 pages, three judges, many multiple courts who have said the same exact thing. What do you think about the speaker's response there? Look, that is to be expected. Uh, he will say that. Any uh, House GOP member, any uh, Senate GOP member will certainly say that publicly. But uh, in conversations privately with rational Republicans, they look at this from the standpoint that each of these legal cases are different. There are different levels of culpability on his part, and some they do view as uh, overzealous prosecution. But we can't look at all of them with the same brush. They're, they're unique and distinct in and of themselves. But Republicans understand anyone serving in public office, if you uh, show any sign that uh, you're not in full support of Donald Trump and his view that this is uh, weaponization of the DOJ and he is a victim uh, in all of this, then you will face retribution from Donald Trump and many of his supporters. So the, the rule or the, the wording in D.C. is to, to follow along with Donald Trump and, and say that, and recognize that what he says is that he is a victim. But many realize behind the scenes that there's something to be said for some of these cases, and it's really important to make sure that the justice system uh, play out here. And more importantly than anything else with regard to the integrity of our elections, we need to make sure that the American people understand that we do have free and fair elections, and the integrity of our elections is stellar, and we need to make sure that people have confidence so that they can head to the elections uh, in the ballot booth in November uh, with confidence that things will be conducted fairly. It is interesting. You know, there is still a Republican running against Donald Trump for president, Nikki That's Haley. Right. Yep. Will Nikki Haley Way in. quote from this appeals court ruling as she campaigns against Donald Trump on the trail in South Carolina? Will she finally weigh in on these, you know, court rulings in these cases in, in a more strenuous way? We will see. Alice Stewart, Sophia Nelson, thank you both very much. All right.